So, one idea per chorus. That that's what we're doing here, and this is just a tremendous, great uh, thing to do practicing and to do on the bandstand. Uh, you could see great players from Sonny Rollins to Mike Brecker to Oz Noy that they take an idea and they just wring the life out of it, and uh, especially. Um, say like John Coltrane on Impressions, where he is uh, just uh, <laughs> practicing on the bandstand. I don't know. You know, he's taking uh, these little ideas that he has and just wringing the life out of them and doing another little thing and wringing the life out of that. And uh, it's brilliant. And so this is a great way to improve your improvisation and improve your approach to improvising all at the same time with just this one little, I don't want to call it a trick because it's not a trick, it's a technique of taking one idea and using it for an entire chorus. But let's back up first and let's get these chords, all right? Because the chords to me are as equally important and interesting as the solo. So the chords, we're in the key of G. And again, you know, I say that with a grain of salt because the first chord is G7, and I don't want to say we're in the key of G7. So pretty much everything is centering around G, sort of like a G blues. And uh, I guess it's not sort of like a G blues. I guess this is a G blues. And uh, so the first chord I play is a G13. But I don't play the root because, again, the bass player is playing the root. So I'm playing the flat seven, the third, and the 13. And that's all starting the third fret with my first finger on the fourth string, with the F, then the B with my second finger, and the E with my third finger. And then to sound the four chord, I just drop my two bottom notes. And so if I'm thinking of C here, that's the next chord, I have the third, the flat seven, and the third again. So. Right? Now here, I just move up a half step. You could think of this a lot of different ways. Uh, if you're thinking of the five chord, uh, you know, because we're doing a setting up the four chord. So you could think of this as a D7 sharp nine with no root. It's the same fingering, I just move it up a half step. Four chord, one chord. Now we're gonna do two five into the four chord. Now here, I'm substituting G7, I'm substituting a D flat 13, then a D flat nine, no root. And then we go into our four chord which is a C9, no root, then a C minor 9, no root, to an A flat 13, no root. So let me do all that again. One chord, four chord, one chord, this two five, into the four chord. Minor four, flat seven, 13. And now we gotta get our way to the six chord. So I start like I'm gonna go down chromatically. But then I go right away to my E7 chord. And if you notice, I'm using a lot of this. There's a lot of that sort of sound in, in this progression. So I come up here. Jimmy Hendrix chord, E7 sharp nine, E7 flat nine. Now I'm gonna walk from my A, all my two chord, all the way up to my five chord. There's my four chord, my five chord. I'm gonna keep going till I get to the one chord, to the six chord, to the two chord, to the five chord and then ending on my G13. So the walk up, A minor seven, G over B with a A in it, 
or you could think of this, I think of this just as a B minor seven sharp five. The four chords, C major seven, nice and happy. Then again, I think of this as a C sharp minor seven sharp five. You could call it an A seven in first inversion or an A in first inversion with a B in it, add two. Then I go to the five chord, regular old D seven. E minor seven, F diminished, D over F sharp, but I want to have this uh, A on top. Then I proceed to the one, six, two, five, G, all these are nine chords, G nine, E nine, uh, A minor seven, D nine, and then G13. And that's the chords. So again, don't, don't gloss over those. You should practice those. Play along with the recording. They're great. They're, to me, uh, you can improvise chords as much as you can improvise a single note. So do it. Okay, so now on to the four different ideas that I used. One idea per chorus. So the first idea is pedaling a note on top. And then the uh, second idea was playing sixth. The third idea was playing a blues riff. And the last idea was playing uh, long pentatonic riffs. So let's start with the first one with this uh, pedaling on top, sort of uh, reminiscent of a pent up house, but I go as opposed to. So here on the G chord, I'm pedaling the uh, 13th, the E, and then I'm going down to the, uh, the what is this, the third, <laughs> the, uh, the B on the G chord, and then just chromatically down to the A. And uh, then it goes to the four chord. So I go to C and I grab the nine here, nine, 13, flat 13, five. And then I go over here, back when it goes to G, now I grab the nine here. So I'm just doing a lot of that. And then it goes minor, then back, E. So I'm just doing a lot, a lot of that, where I'm I'm finding notes that are in the chords, pedaling on them and playing notes below it. So if we just take the G chord, if we just take a G7, there's so many possibilities. So here, and like I showed you here, but you could also do here, or here, right? There's tons of them. And that's just pedaling on the first string. You could pedal off of the second string. Or even here. So there's just tons of stuff that you could do. So that technique is pedaling a note on top and then dropping three chromatic notes below it. Just keep doing stuff like that. And uh, so that, that's the first technique. Then the second technique was uh, doing sixth. And really, to enable yourself to do that, you need to play, be able to play, uh, six on all the notes in a G scale. Now in this instance, we have a G7. So our seventh is there, you know, is flatted. And then of course you got to get them all down here too. So as many places as you could play six, the more places you could play, the more kind of cool stuff you can come up with. And for me, the fun is always trying to link the chords together without jumping all over the place. So the one chord, four chord, one chord. 
And then of course you could take a breath, come back in with the four chord. Four chord goes minor. Then it comes back to the one chord. To the six chord. Two chord. To the five. Then the turn around. And so there's, you know, you could do just endless choruses. You could sit down and practice, do a play along, and just do the whole thing on six. Nothing but six chord, you know, six, the interval. Okie dokie. Now the next one, I took a blues riff. So here I'm doing the, the fifth and the flat seven of G. D and F. Then the blue note. So the blue note here is the flat fifth. It is the D flat, C, flat third, major third, root. When it goes to the four chord, I could still play this, but then I want to get this B flat to sound that four chord. Then back to the one chord. And then of course we go to the four chord. Four chord goes minor. And then back to the, I guess the one chord, if you'd like. And then the five chord. I think that's what I did there. And I think I only did that because I ended up here. You know, I ended up. So I, I kind of thought of this. Again, I'm just doing one, two, chromatic approach, three. So easy peasy. And then I just kept going with that idea for the, for the remainder of the chorus. So now onto my fourth idea. And uh, my fourth idea was I wanted to do um, pentatonics. So I did this sort of another sort of classic pentatonic thing. And that's a nice three octave. One octave, two octave, three octave riff. And it's it's great just to try and get as many of those large, as many octave as you can riffs are fun to have. So here I'm playing a G and then I'm sliding up to the sixth, going to the root. Uh, and then I'm doing the third, the fifth, uh, the sixth and the root, third and fifth, sixth and root. And then I go to the flat seven. Then when it goes to the four chord, so here, root, third, fifth, sixth, root, third, fifth, sixth, root. You guys can come up with your own fingering. I kind of like this because I get that slide. And it's just something that I've heard players do my whole life. So I just like that sound. And then back to the, you know, one. And then we go to the six. All I got to do is take my G, the root, raise it up to a G sharp. And now I'm spelling that E chord. And then for my two chord, I think I treated it more kind of like a C chord. Then the five chord. And then I think I just ended with octaves. So again, you know, when you're doing these one idea for chorus, obviously once in a while in these things, you're gonna, you know, just do something a tiny bit different, but it's the concept that you're taking an idea and trying to milk it for all it's worth. And again, doing it in a practice situation, do it for an entire chorus, you know, just like fire up, you know, you could fire up the play along on this track, you know, and just put it on loop forever and just 
Try and do one idea per course. And that will lead you to the, the, the next thing where you're going to go, well, I don't have any ideas, right? So I've just given you four ideas. And where did I get those ideas from? I got those ideas from listening to records, watching other people play, transcribing stuff, my teachers, my friends, anywhere I could grab ideas, I still try to grab ideas. If I hear something I like, I run and listen to it and try and figure out how to play it. And I try and put it into my playing. So you're right, if, if you have no ideas, what that means is that you don't have any vocabulary, you know? And that's something that I find a lot with, um, with some guitar students where they're like, I can play modes and arpeggios and, you know, I know all my scales, but I can't play anything. And it's because they, they haven't really made music out of this stuff. It's sort of like they know the letters in the alphabet, but they don't know how to make words out of them. So by listening and transcribing, you learn how to make musical statements, musical words, riffs, ideas. So uh, that's it for this time, and uh, I hope you enjoy this. If you're watching this on YouTube, please subscribe and uh, ring the bell. And uh, if you're watching this on Truefire, make sure that you download the chart uh, with the tab and also the play-along track. And uh, I guess that's it. Until next time, peace. <laughs>